So we would like to extend a warm welcome to all the young students, young devotees who have assembled here today. Also like to welcome our special guest today, Mr. Gupta, who is seated there in the back. He had expressed a keen desire to have a look at this program, so we would like to welcome him. Haribo! Haribo! So we have a very interesting topic for today. Uh, you can just yes. The pleasure hunt. Generally, there is a saying that there was a certain age when people were so much dedicated to God that whatever they would have, they would practically give it to God. That was the golden age, the Satya Yuga. Then an age came, the Treta Yuga. People's God consciousness became little less. And many times, if someone had to offer something to God, they would make a kind of circle on the ground and they would throw all of their money in the air. Whatever fell within was given to God, whatever fell outside they would keep. Then the age proceeded, in the next age the people would make a line and then they would throw all the money up in the air. Whatever would fall on the right they would give to God, whatever would fall on the left they would keep it. In Kali Yuga there is a tendency, you have the money, throw it up in the air. Whatever God can catch belongs to Him. Whatever falls down is ours. If He has played cricket, He will do it. Otherwise, it's all ours. This is an age of hypocrisy and quarrel. This is an age where people have a tendency to cheat where people are too much addicted to their own pleasure, to one's own selfish interests. Therefore, this topic is of great importance because practically all of us are in the search of pleasure. And generally pleasure has become synonymous with acquiring more and more objects, possessing more and more things, creating facilities by which one can selfishly enjoy things to himself at the complete exclusion of all others. Therefore, today's topic is very interesting and very important and I request all of you to pay kind attention to this subject matter because in a short period of time if you understand the principles which you are going to discuss today, it may change your complete perspective of life. You may experience a terrific paradigm shift in your life. So I have divided today's presentation into five parts. First is, who is hunting for pleasure? Second is, why do we hunt for this pleasure? Third is, how do we hunt for this pleasure? Fourth is, what is the experience in this hunt for pleasure? And fifth is a conclusion. So we have who, why, how, what. These questions will be answered in sequence. So let us take the first step. Who is the one who is hunting for pleasure? Practically every conditioned soul, every soul who is embodied within this 8.4 million species of life has only one goal in life, pleasure. Increasing one's pleasure, decreasing one's miseries. All of us are put in a suffering condition under the influence of material energy and we want to avoid it. Therefore, who is the one who is looking for pleasure? Everyone. 
any sentient being is in this business of looking or hunting for pleasure if you look into the dictionary then the meaning for hunt is to seek to find out and pleasure means a state of great satisfaction and joy so all of us want to maximize our satisfaction and we are seeking this pleasure and no one is an exclusion someone may be consciously doing it others may be unconsciously doing it under the influence of material energy but the fact is who is hunting for this pleasure every soul without an exception so the second question is why do we hunt what is it that makes us seek pleasure like this what makes us so infatuated with this concept of acquiring pleasure vedanta sutra describes this anandamayo abhyasat every soul is by nature pleasure seeking the soul by nature is sat chit ananda the eternal nature of the soul is it is all blissful but now the soul has been covered over by this material body and because of the covering of this body the soul is unable to express its real unlimited all blissful condition hence what permeates through the covering of this body is a very diffused reflection in as much as a moon which is covered over by the clouds will only show a diffused reflection of its rays the moon which is uncovered by the clouds on a clear sky will actually show its complete luminosity similarly the soul is fully effulgent and all blissful but because of the covering of this body and influence of the subtle body the soul is unable to experience its real all blissful condition in connection with god and hence it is identifying itself with this mind body and senses and hence depending on the kind of body which has been received every species of life there is this endeavor for seeking pleasure therefore the soul by nature is all blissful but because it is covered over by matter the soul is misidentifying itself in a specific way with matter and according to the group of senses which have been bestowed upon the soul he is seeking pleasure in that particular way therefore we have in practically all species of life this pleasure seeking tendency because the soul by nature is all blissful so that is answer to why do we hunt for this pleasure the third point is how do we hunt what is the way or means which we employ in order to search for this pleasure seek this pleasure on the physical platform we search for pleasure and seek pleasure in four ways at four levels and these four are at an increasing level one higher than the other and we have graded it in this way depending upon the intensity of experience which we feel while going through this pleasurable experience so at the lowest level we have sense pleasure pleasure connected with the senses the eyes the ears the nose the tongue the skin all of these senses in connection with the sense objects experience a certain kind of pleasure the eyes always want to see something beautiful the ears always want to hear something wonderful why because that is the nature of this sense pleasure the senses are always seeking gratification with a certain object why is it that everyone wants to reside in a very nice posh locality in a clean place because the eyes want to see good objects why is it that we want to hear praise through our ears because the ears 
they want to be connected with positive sound vibrations therefore the senses are seeking gratification in different ways and the most intense experience at the sensual level is the sex pleasure where the skin is employed through the skin we try to enjoy this pleasure and practically this pleasure is so intense that practically the whole material world is running based upon this principle of sex pleasure in fact this pleasure is so powerful so stimulating so intense that even the greatest most powerful kings have been survived their prurient impulses they have managed to control huge armies they have managed to defeat big powerful kingdoms but they have surrendered to an incontinent lifestyle because of the influence of their lusty desires and inability to control their sense pleasure this is the basic level the first level of pleasure there was a king his name was bhartri hari very powerful king he had a beautiful wife he had become completely infatuated by her beauty in fact he had written 100 poems glorifying her beauty and those poems are known as shringara shatak one time a sadhu came to that king's palace and gave him one beautiful jewel and told him please give this jewel to the one whom you like the most whom you are attached to infatuated the most the king took it and gave it to his beautiful wife several days passed by the king was sitting in his court room a very beautiful lady came and she was carrying this beautiful jewel and she brought this jewel and gave it to this king the king was surprised and shocked what is this i had given it to my wife how did this girl this woman this lady get it and then he sat in his palace and started thinking and wondering and then he got the reply he understood what has happened immediately he wrote down a beautiful verse ya chintayami satatam mai saviratta sa chanyam ichhati jana sajano nyarakta अस्मत्ते परिष्यति काचिदन्यांक्लूजन दट आय हॅव बीन इन्फॅच्युएटेड अँड अटॅच टू दिस वुमन्स ब्युटी आय गेव हर दिस ज्वेल थिंकिंग दॅट शी लव्ह मी द मोस्ट या चिंतया मी सततम बट मै सा विरक्ता शी वॉज नॉट अटॅच टू मी अट ऑल in fact all this time she was constantly thinking of some other man search anyam ichhati jana she was thinking of another man and as soon as she got this jewel and i told her that this is to be given to one whom you love the most immediately she took it and gave it to that man search anyam ichhati jana and my wife was thinking that that man loves her the most but actually he loves someone else the most सा चान्य मिच्छति जन स जन अन्य रखा सो ही टू दैट ज्वेल एंड गेव इट टू सम अदर वुमन हुम ही लव द मोस्ट एंड ही वॉज थिंकिंग दैट शी लव हिम द मोस्ट बट शी वॉज अटैच टू सम वन एल्स एंड शी गेव दैट टू सम वन एल्स एंड ही थॉट दैट शी लव मी द मोस्ट बट ही वॉज कंप्लीटली डिसमेड एंड फाइनली दिस ज्वेल वेंट ऑन and came in the hands of this woman who came in my court room who loved me the most and i was not aware at all asmat krite cha paritushyati kaachidanya and in this way this jewel passed so many hands each person thinking that they love me they love me the most and bhartri hari just hit upon his head with his hand dik tam cha tam cha madanam cha imam cha mam cha dik mam and he said dik tam cha tam cha to hell with my wife 
who betrayed me and because of whom I was put in so much of trauma. Tamcha, to hell with that man whom she loved. Zikr Tamcha, Tamcha, Madanamcha, to hell with lust, to hell with Kamdev, who made a complete fool of both of us. And Madanamcha, Imamcha, to hell with this whole episode, because of it I am putting so much trauma. And Mamcha, to hell with me also, because I got so attached. It was a previous era, so even in frustration a person could write beautiful Sanskrit poetry. Now times have changed. So one would hurl invectives in great anger. But because he was a very cultured gentleman, although he was so much depressed, so much angry, what came out was beautiful Sanskrit poetry. Dhiktamcha tamcha madanamcha imamcha mamcha. And then this became the first verse of a series of verses. Previously he had written 100 verses Shringara Shatak. Now he wrote 100 further verses and called it Vairagya Shatak. And he became completely detached. And he understood to surrender to these sense pleasures is not the goal of life. Therefore one may be attracted and infatuated by sense pleasures, but ultimately they are frustrating in nature. Above sense pleasures comes the pleasure of the mind. And we find all kinds of entertainments they come in this category. They give pleasure to the mind. All kinds of poetry which is written by poets. Poets when they sit down to write poetry they forget eating and sleeping also. That shows they are getting a level of pleasure which is higher than sense pleasure. Or we have artists who may be creating works of art. They are getting mental pleasure which is higher than gross sense pleasure. Our people get completely infatuated in watching all kinds of sports. So you are getting some pleasure in the mind. And when you are seeing all of these things, you become completely detached from all kinds of other physical activities because your mind is seeking that pleasure, right? You are watching an intense match going on, World Cup football is going on and some Climax movement is going on. So everyone, you bring the best samosa. He said, no, not now. Don't disturb me. Suspense. The mind is engrossed completely. But someone who is not attached to those games and who is not feeling any pleasure in those kind of entertainment, his mind is not into it. He cannot understand what is making him so much attached to this sport. Right? For a third party, he may see a game of football and he may think, why 22 people are running behind one ball? Give one ball to each one. What is the problem? But one who understands the game and then who gets into the game gets a kind of pleasure, which is at the level of the mind. Above this is the intellectual pleasure. You must have seen, many of you may be playing chess. Two people sit down, put a board and they start playing chess. Only those two people know what's going on. The rest of the world cannot understand. And they are sitting there. They are gazing intently on the board with greater concentration than any yogi also. And for several hours they are sitting in the same posture. You look at them, they are sitting without moving their hands, come after two hours in the same pose, as if they have been frozen. What is making them sit like that? Even devotees with their beat bag are unable to sit like that for several hours, initially. But there is some pleasure which one is receiving at the level of the intellect. That is called the intellectual pleasure. Or someone is working on a computer program or a mathematical problem. It absorbs his mind so much, his intelligence so much, that he forgets all the other lower pleasures. There is a famous case. In 1863, a very famous American engineer, his name was John Roebling, he decided to create a bridge across Manhattan River and he wanted to connect New York to Manhattan. He conceived of the design for this Manhattan Bridge. Anyone who heard about it 
said this is outlandish idea it's impossible no structural engineer will take it seriously you can't make it but john roblin was so fully convinced that yes i can do it he knew that he has created that bridge the design is perfect so he convinced his son washington roblin about it so both father and son started the construction unfortunately within a few years there was a major crash on the site and john roblin died and washington roblin was left with a crippling head injury which paralyzed him all of his faculties became inert he was bedridden but because his intelligence had already been inspired with the idea of creating that bridge even in that paralyzed condition somehow he conceived of an idea of transmitting his message to the engineers because practically all the engineers had given up saying only father and son know what is going on we have no idea at all nobody has ever thought of this kind of a bridge only they know father has gone son is about to go so as far as we are concerned we have nothing to do with this bridge so many were quitting and he could not speak he could not move his hands he could not move his legs he was bed ridden but you see the power of the intellect Washington Roblin conceived of a system of communication with his wife. All he could move was his fingers. And that too gently. So he would call his wife and tap upon her shoulders or her arm in a certain way and develop a code of communication. Simply by movement of his fingers. and when she became familiar with the code of communication then slowly he started transmitting all the ideas which he had for completion of the bridge one by one and the engineers started implementing those ideas as they would be coming from the hospital and then within one decade it took to complete this bridge but the manhattan bridge was completed you can imagine the power of this intelligence practically all of his senses were inert but his intelligence was working and he was getting a terrific pleasure and satisfaction by using his intelligence in that way therefore intellectual pleasure is higher than mental and even sensual pleasure and above this is the pleasure of the ego and we have so many people going to the himalayas and they have certain kind of satisfaction we have conquered this mountain we have conquered this peak we have created this kind of a revolution we have achieved something in life so one gets a feeling from the ego and that gives you a certain kind of pleasure the pleasure of the ego so these are the ways by which we try to manipulate and obtain pleasure at the physical and subtle levels but these are all bodily pleasures these are all at the level of the body in the physique and hence we know we do not have any idea and understanding of something higher than this sense pleasure mental pleasures intellectual pleasures and egoistic pleasures now we have to understand what is our experience in trying to obtain these pleasures all of us have some experience of these various kinds of pleasures but what is our experience and this experience is very interesting because it will actually inform us about the predicament we are put in the first experience is the pursuit of any kind of material pleasures at these levels is number 1 painful now you may think that this is contradictory how can pursuit of pleasure be painful how can pleasure be painful but this is the first thing number 1 it is painful how is that pain and pleasure are like twins as soon as you get pleasure you have pain as example is given yahi samsparsha ja bhoga dukhayo naya evate adyantavant kaunteya 
न ते शूरम ते बुधा कृष्ण एक्सप्लेन इन द गीता एनी प्लेजर विच अराइज आउट ऑफ अ कॉन्टैक्ट बिटवीन सेंसेस एंड सेंस ऑब्जेक्ट इज अ सोर्स ऑफ पोटेंशियल मिजरी इट इज लाइक नेक्टर इन द बिगिनिंग बट इट इज लाइक पॉइजन इन द एंड दुख योन एवते just like if there is a coin there is head and there is tail if you are using the coin you will get both head and tail you cannot have only one if you want material pleasure you will have material suffering also which is a concomitant factor which comes along with it it's part of the package it's a free gift offer from material nature you want material pleasure okay you get material pain free of cost All the example is given that a dog, when he is trying to walk on the road, and there is a lamp light, he sees his shadow. The dog tries to run away from his own shadow. The dog looks at his shadow and thinks, "This is some other creature which is trying to attack me." And he shouts, "Who?" And that shadow also moves, and the dog becomes more afraid, and the dog runs ahead and looks back, and wags his tail, and that is also wagging the shadow also. and the dog feels this is more powerful because shadow look bigger you know so dog sees someone more bigger than me is standing here and doing the same things dog is running around this circle looking back trying to run away from his own shadow one can never run away from one's own shadow one can never run away from material miseries which follow us like shadow therefore material misery is guaranteed the guarantee card is there krishna has made this material world and he has given this tag dukkhalayam ashashvatam no one knows this world better than the creator no one knows this product better than the creator right so krishna at the time of creation of this material world has given this tag this stamp dukkhalayam ashashvatam here take this product the material world what is like dukkhalayam it is only filled with misery whatever you may try to do you are going to face misery try your time starts now and people are trying in all the species of life just like if you go to a washing machine shop and there is a washing machine and the advertisers are advertising that okay you buy this washing machine beautiful washing machine you are giving it a 50% discount these are some of the facilities you get you put your clothes it will get chopped into small pieces you try to put your hand sometimes you'll get a big electric shock if you're lucky you'll get a small shock but shock is guaranteed and you put water inside and then suddenly it will start erupting into flames it will start steaming up you know these are some of the unpredictable features of this washing machine and there is much more which is in surprise please buy this product 50% discount how many will go for this washing machine where the advertiser the manufacturer himself is claiming at the top of his voice take it but it is filled with faults these are some of the features and this is how you will become miserable by in trying to enjoy this If we are laughing but we are taking this material world and trying to enjoy it in the same way like this person therefore as soon as there is pleasure there is also an associated pain next point is that as far as pleasure and pain is concerned how much pleasure two things come in mind when we talk of pleasure first is how much pleasure and second is how long just like a cow who is tied by a rope the cow cannot go beyond a certain limit because of the limits of the rope the cow is bound similarly we cannot go beyond the limits of our karma in trying to enjoy material pleasure which acts like a rope our karmic activities act as a rope and they will not allow us to graze beyond a certain limit the cow may see all the greenery all around but it has got its around its neck a rope he tries to stretch himself he will only strangle 
therefore he is roaming around round and round round and round going around the circle therefore material pleasure is limiting by nature and the second point is how long can we enjoy this pleasure because we have this body which is constantly deteriorating someone may say i want to enjoy sweets just like there is an example of this shetty's restaurant here at grand road one of the biggest hoteliers in mumbai he has five hotels all over bombay and he was explaining that when he first came to bombay from urupi he hardly had any money and the thing which he loved he would love the most was batata vada and he was working in a hotel as a hotel boy and he would steal batata vada as a need and he would dream that one day i would have so much of wealth that i can eat as much as i want but then after some time he made millions he has five hotels and he had diabetes and he had other kinds of diseases and the doctor said no batata vada you cannot eat anything like this control yourself so practically speaking not only how much but also how long because the body is constantly decaying deteriorating just like an old dog which has lost all of its teeth cannot enjoy the sucker inside the bone because the teeth is not there he is simply licking the bone he cannot enjoy it anymore therefore as far as material pleasure is concerned we cannot enjoy beyond a certain limit and the fact of the matter is most of the time we are simply struggling to decrease the extent of our miseries and all the satisfaction we can get in our lives is i am less miserable than him and then life is going on comparing miseries sharing notes about miseries in fact a patient went to a doctor did a check up and the doctor said there is a good news and a bad news what do you want to hear first so what's the bad news the doctor said you have cancer sorry and you're going to die in 3 years you have only 3 years more to live so the patient said then what is the good news the doctor said along with cancer you also have alzheimer's disease because of which you lose one's memory and because of this in 3 months you will forget that you have cancer <laughs> be happy right so that is our condition misery is awaiting us we have experienced misery but the only satisfaction we have is we have lost memory of those miserable conditions and we are simply comparing what is the condition by which i will be least miserable looking for the point of least misery therefore there is nothing positive about it so it is number 1 painful number 2 material pleasure by nature is addicting that is the second nature of material pleasure it is addicting addicting means one wants repeated experiences therefore it is described here in the shrimad bhagavatam vashila narad muni ye sadhi atur chittanam matra sparshe chhayamuh bhava sindhu prabho drishto hari charyanu varnanam it says each soul desires contact of the senses with the sense objects matra sparsha ichhaya muhu again and again we want to experience those pleasures you are addicted to a certain pleasure you want that experience again and again and again that is the nature although you know that it is creating so much of misery but still you cannot overcome it because it is addicting by nature matra sparsha ichhaya muhu and because it is addicting by nature one becomes selfish one gives up the concern for others and the cost of others at the cost of giving pain to others one wants to enjoy and in this way one leads his life ridden with all kinds of guilty feelings internal conflicts and one does not know the procedure of coming out of it because he has become a complete slave of this feeling of addiction 
therefore this is a very important point one just becomes addicted and is unable to come out of it depending on the kind of lifestyle you lead you start thinking only in those terms nothing else comes to your mind and although you know that this is not correct still you can't do anything you are helpless therefore material pleasure is addicting by nature it makes you a slave and a slave is always miserable as there was this one person who was addicted to gambling he was addicted to investing in the share bazaar he just could not do without it he was a compulsive gambler he would speculate like anything buying selling buying selling buying selling that was the only thing going on in his life mind completely infatuated by it so he had gone to visit his friend and his friend was telling him that i am sick today and my temperature has gone up by 4 degrees what should i do and the share broker said sell it that was the only thing going on in his mind anything goes up sell it anything goes down buy it infatuated because of habit nothing else enters the mind jagat janamayam lubham kamukam kamini mayam addiction just makes you see things according to those desires only this is the second nature of material pleasure it is addicting by nature thirdly and one should also understand along with this that there are ways and means by which we can come out of these addictions but we are not inclined to take to this process just like some people they are used to a certain lifestyle they don't want to change it because they have got addicted to that lifestyle other day i was in goa and i was telling people about the importance of chanting in the morning and one boy got up and started asking me sir you are talking about chanting but why is it that you have to chant only in the morning at 5 o'clock why do you get up at 4:30 and start chanting early in the morning at 5 o'clock is that a time to do any activity take some good rest relax yourself and then in later in the day you can do when you do not have to take so much of tension in life getting up at 4:30 and all why do you have to chant early in the morning why all these spiritual activities go on so early in the morning so i said okay you seem to be a man from this place do you go for parties so yes why do your parties start at 9 pm why don't you have your party starting at 5 am and you had no answer that come on how is it possible early in the morning just imagine that new year party we begin on first morning 5 am stop this light like late night parties start early morning parties why not that come on what you are saying maza nahi aayega it won't be fun late night it is fun so yes because these activities by nature are tamasic therefore that time is appropriate these activities are practically beyond the influence of the modes therefore early in the morning it's much better therefore one may be addicted to a certain lifestyle but still it is possible to change material pleasure is addicting by nature old habits die hard thirdly as far as pleasure is concerned it is described here it is risky and bhagavatam describes mahat sevam dwaram ahur vimukte samo dwaram yoshitam sangi sangam it is so risky that there is a risk of going into hellish conditions samo dwaram yoshitam sangi sangam we have obtained this human form of life which is very rare very valuable if one engages in material pleasures pursuit one will lose this chance of human form of life and enter into hellish conditions one may go down into lower species of life and give up this most valuable sacred opportunity 
of utilizing assets as a human being. A human being has certain faculties which no other species of life has. Only in the human form of life we can achieve God consciousness. Only in the human form of life we can think of God, meditate of God, chant His names, understand something about the goal of life. In no other species these facilities are available. Therefore, one should understand that as far as human form of life is concerned, if you lose this opportunity, you are finished. Therefore, the example is given, if you want to lick honey, it is all right. But if the honey is coated over a razor's edge and you are asked to lick that razor, you try to lick the honey, but the honey is above the razor. What is it? Risky. The taste is sweet, but not for long. As your tongue goes over the blade, you get a cut. And then you get a mixed taste. You feel this is honey? But is this original honey? Looks like desi honey. Not imported. Why this quality, this taste is like this? Look in the mirror. Ah. Cut. Yes? Therefore, material pleasure may be very, very sweet in the beginning. But you are licking a razor. And this honey is coated over the razor. You will get cut. Beware. There is no exception to this rule. Anyone, however powerful he may be, will get cut. No ifs and no buts. This is the law of nature. Therefore it is very, very risky. But some people feel, but sir, I have no problem, I do all these other sense gratification and all these things, but along with that I also do my daily puja. So you know when I do puja in the morning then, Everything gets, you know, settled for. I got this account also parallel going on. I opened this piety account and with this I got the freedom, I get certain perks, certain benefits to sin up to this extent. And I am able to manage that. And people seriously believe in this, that they may go on sinning as long as they can engage in some kind of piety. And they feel they did not take to spiritual life on a serious basis. Keep some puja room, some kind of altar, and take another bhakti, you know, and start moving it around. Jai Jagadish Hare, Jai Jagadish Hare. But at the same time, your concentration is not there fully. There is a TV going on and there is a match going on. Hare Hare, India Hare. Jai Jagadish Hare. Pakistan to India Hare. So mind is going there, mind is going here, the eyes are looking here, ears are somewhere else, your hands are moving in this direction, you are all over the place. So some kind of mundane religiosity and one feels, I am prepared, I am well armed to engage in all kinds of sin for the day, I am coming, no one can stop me. But people do not know the difference between mundane piety so-called typical Hindu religiosity, people feel I am Hindu. Come on, don't tell me anything, I am Hindu. Okay, Hindu means what? Hindu means he can do anything. That is Hindu. Right? He can go on doing anything, there is no Bindu. No full stop. He can do anything, that is Hindu. So there was a horse, and this was a very religious horse. So a sadhu had trained this horse and given some instructions to this horse that as soon as the horse is called, hang God, the horse will start running. Right? And if you wanted to make the horse stop, you have to shout, save me! And the horse will stop. So one guest came deep inside the jungle and he was lost. He saw this sadhu and said, now I have to go out of the jungle. I need some help. He said, oh, I've got a good horse. I've got a religious horse. Well trained. You just tell these two mantras, if you want to make it go, say, thank God, it will start running. If you want to stop it, just say, save me, it will stop. Okay. So this guest came, sat on the horse, bid goodbye to the sadhu and shouted, thank God. And then the horse started on a slow trot. 
then this guest in his ecstasy forgot the other mantra save me he was wondering what is that but he was not able to remember so he again shouted thank god or in increased its pace again started shouting thank god thank god thank god all ran faster and faster and faster and then he shouted thank god and the horse jumped high in the air and all kinds of different calamities he was going through in the middle of the forest and the horse was moving left and right up and down and finally the horse came onto a edge of a mountain and this man could see that i am going to die it's a deep fall and the horse was coming and he is shouting thank god thank god thank god horse is continuing they were just one foot away from the edge and suddenly it struck from within and the horse was also obedient kada stop just one foot before and as soon as the horse stopped this fellow got so relieved he suddenly shouted thank god I don't have to tell you what happened. So this is what happens to religious horses. Who learn mantras by heart. Who only know certain mantras. When to chant those mantras. What to do when the mantras are chanted. At certain times of the day. But they are so dumb. So foolish they cannot see. That one foot beyond is a precipice. Which is going to land me down. In the worst crisis. I am going to die, I am going to fall down. We can't see that. I am going to lose my human form of life, enter into hellish conditions. Can't see that. Therefore, simply remembering a few mantras, a few pujas, knowing some kind of religious procedures is not sufficient. One has to be systematically trained in spirituality. Many people in India feel that I don't need this spirituality, I am scientific. what scientific how many people understand what is science and that too in india hardly anyone understands even those who are studying science are post graduates in science they are doing it simply to make money get a degree make money science kya apne ko kya karna so actually speaking to understand these principles deeply is not anyone's business and people feel that i don't need to go deep into these subject matters because there is some some kind of sentimentality going on but actually speaking even in the realm of science people have more faith in the scientists than they have in their scientific procedure and i was always giving this example that in iit when i was studying vairam prabhu was also giving this example we had an experiment find out the value for g gravitational constant is supposed to be 9.8 right at least when i was studying it was that 9.8 now when we would do the experiment someone would get the figure 13 someone would get 20 someone got 108 auspicious by spiritual standards but far off from 9.8 and one person i remember he actually got something like 10.6 or something and he started shouting and said this is the perfect value i have done the experiment perfectly i have full faith and everyone said newton se bhi bada ho gaya okay you are bigger than newton ha huh? huh? shut up 9.8 is the value whatever figures they have got we should ultimately surrender and bring it back to 9.8 somehow or the other because even if we have performed the experiment perfectly we have more faith in the value given in the book more faith in the scientist in those mahajans in the past who have given us this figure newton maharaj ki jai we have that faith so who says that we are completely rational completely scientific bogus we are followers in the field of religion in the field of science also because ultimately to a certain extent you have to have faith in someone somewhere till a certain point of time therefore this is the nature of material pleasure it is risky fourthly it is illusory illusory means that it never satisfies 
सैत्सम निर्जित कपो बेकराड विषया प्रियान यथोपजो शंभुंजानो नास्त्रेन्द्रिय हिरण्य कशिपो है प्रैक्टिकली एवरीथिंग एट इज डिस्पोजल वॉज नॉट सेटिस्फाइड विद दैट यथोपजो शंभुंजानो हु प्रैक्टिकली एवरी सेंस ऑफ जट इन ऑल द फोर डायरेक्शन टू एंजॉय बट द नेचर ऑफ दिस सेंस प्लेजर इज इट इज इल्यूजरी Simply amassing the objects cannot satisfy. Not tripya, ajitendriya. If your senses are not controlled, you cannot be satisfied at all. That is the law. For satisfaction, you need sense control. Uncontrolled senses means misery and lack of peace. That is law. Whether we understand it today or tomorrow. And secondly. it's illusory because this pleasure is mental just imagine you have a big feast to eat you are sat down chappan bhog has been made and you are very hungry you have fasted one full day and chappan bhog is lying in front of you and you are about to start eating and your friend comes and says yaar tu university exam mein fail ho gaya acha kha raha hai kya kha le How much can you eat? How much can you eat? The potential pleasure is there, but the pleasure is not there in the ladu. It is not there in the kachori. It is not there in those sweets. It is there in the mind. Now the mind is disturbed. So now ladu is just going blindly inside here. Uh, sometimes kachori goes here. because you are bewildered mind is bewildered the source of pleasure is there but why you can't experience it because it's actually there in the mind or you are sitting down to eat and someone says okay you are going to eat okay so you greedy pig start eating i know that you are just like a big fat hippopotamus eat can you start eating Will you feel satisfaction? No. Those words, those insults, go deep inside the heart, and you lose your mood to it, because the pleasure is actually there in the mind. Therefore, it is illusory. And the fifth is it is stale. Nature of material pleasure it is stale. Puna puna charvita charvana nam repeatedly chewing the chewed, just like the chewing gum. Go on chewing, go on chewing, go on chewing. How much can you chew? Take it out. Give it to another person, and he takes. Mm, gives it to another fellow. Goes on. Maha, 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 maha. Goes on transferring. How much can you take out of it? Nothing. But it is like that. Trying to use our senses to squeeze some kind of material pleasure is like squeezing repeatedly the same thing again and again and again. Puna, puna, charvita. charvananam repeatedly chewing that which is chewed therefore it is called stale and as far as the sixth quality is concerned it is flickering material pleasure is flickering by nature and as part of this as govinda das says chapal sukha laga navire it is chapal flickering by nature not permanent because the time spent in pursuing the pleasure is more than the time spent for enjoying the pleasure that is one aspect of flickering and secondly familiarity breeds contempt you have that object but once you have that object that object doesn't give you so much of pleasure again so these are the six characteristics of this material pleasure pain painful addicting risky illusory stale If you take the first words of each one of this, it comes out to be P A R I S. Paris. If you want to remember this lecture, remember Paris. And the last is flickering. Fly. Paris. Fly. Fly to Paris. If you remember this, then you will remember the nature of material pleasure. P for painful. A for R for risky. I for And S for 
and last is flickering these are the six characteristics of material pleasure which we experience so the conclusion is beyond this material pleasure there is a spiritual pleasure which is available the conclusion of the pleasure hunt is we are hunting in the wrong place with the wrong weapons our condition is we are trying to hunt for a fish in the forest we are climbing up the tree searching for fishes that is our condition pleasure is there but it does not exist in this material world it exists in the spiritual world what you see is a reflection if there is a tree standing on the bank of a river what you see is a reflection in the river and you see some mangoes in the reflection and you think let me taste those mangoes and you jump into the river to taste the mangoes which are there in the reflection in the river what are the chances of finding those mangoes nil and he's swimming under water trying to search where those mangoes are they look so beautiful so wonderful so delicious in spite of his best effort he can't find those mangoes he comes out and says hey, where where are those mangoes hey, see see it is still there and he again looks inside yes he can still see again he dives inside and he goes inside and on top of that he finds three four other people who are also searching and they say oh we are searching before you so he sees that okay i am not the only one there are others also who are searching like this so maybe i am on the right track so there is a big crowd of people searching for those mangoes under water and by that time on the bank they have set up book stalls with books selling on 10 sure shot ways of searching mango under water and they are making a good sale out of it but you are not dived properly actually you are not gone to the right depths you surely find it in due course of time that's what people are saying not not getting pleasure in sex life not getting pleasure in the material world you're not doing it the right way 10 ways of doing it 20 ways of doing it but the point is the pleasure hunt is taking place at the wrong place with the wrong methods with the wrong tools real pleasure is at the level of the soul if we have to seek for pleasure real pleasure is spiritual pleasure it is available in connection with krishna only no other way therefore the conclusion of our talk is any attempt to hunt for pleasure on the material platform will result in frustration and misery in as much as you are looking for fish in a forest you have to look for the place right place for the right thing similarly pleasure exists not in this material world not through material senses but at the level of the soul it can be searched through spiritual senses and the process for doing it is find a bona fide spiritual master find devotees find association get connected and start chanting of the holy name in proper association hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Ram. I would like to end my talk here. If there are any questions, you can put forward. Yes. So we have 15 minutes for questions and answers. We can have a few questions first. Yes, sir. there is a microphone which is coming please wait hari krishna yes uh, my name is amit prabhu and my question is uh, i i just said just now that we can get spiritual uh, pleasure by worshiping lord krishna i want to um, ask you that can we get spiritual pleasure by worshiping any other lord besides krishna say for example lord ganesha or lord shiva and so on hmm answer is no and i will substantiate my answer the soul has a connection with krishna krishna says in gita mamai vamsho jivaloke jiva bhuta sanatana so the soul is part and parcel of krishna so there is parmatma in the heart that is expansion of krishna so soul has a connection with krishna 
all these other souls like Ganesh, Indra, Chandra, Varuna, they are all also souls like us. But they are empowered demigods, having certain powers. So Ganesh is also worshipping Lord Krishna. Yat Pada Pallava Yugam Vinidhaya Kumbha Dvande Pranama Samaye Saganadhi Raja The tumuli of Lord Ganesh is containing the lotus feet of Lord Krishna, Lord Narsingha Dev. So if Lord Ganesh is worshipping Krishna and he is getting all of his powers by worshipping Krishna, what is our problem in worshipping Krishna? Right? So basically all of these different gods, different demigods, they are all servants of Krishna. They, they will take great pleasure if you worship Krishna. So there is no connection of the soul with other souls. The soul has a connection with super soul, Krishna. So all these other demigods are souls. They are like posts, powerful posts. Therefore, we do not recommend demigods worship. We highly recommend worshipping Krishna so that you will make a long process short. That is the whole idea. So many times people say, why you have all this deity business and you know, why you have to come to the temple and worship deity, this is idol worship. I don't believe in idol worship and this and that. God is everywhere. If God is everywhere, why do I need to come to temple? God is everywhere, but we can't see God everywhere. So we need to come to a temple of Krishna and worship Krishna, where deity is worshipped in a bona fide way. As the example is given that just like you have a, a television, you know, the channels, and all of these channels, vibrations are going on everywhere, all around. Why do you need a TV? Even sitting in this room, now all the ZTV, Star TV, all those vibrations are going on, right? It's everywhere. It's all pervading. Why do you need a TV set? Hey, right, come on. For seeing TV, you need TV only. How can I see just like that? No problem. You just see in some corner. If you can find ZTV, some program you want to see. No. You need a receptacle, a proper place where you can actually worship. Therefore, you need a deity form. Very important. I was giving the example yesterday at IIT. You say this is paper that is this is stone that is stone, right? God is made in stone. Newspaper is paper. Your 500 rupee note in the pocket that is also paper. Newspaper you take, take out the other paper in the pocket, 500 rupee note. Will you do that? No, no, this is special. Let it be here only. Right? Every month you give out your newspaper to the Radhiwala. You call the Radhiwala, okay, buy the kilo. How much you will give? Wait. 30 days newspaper. Take. Take him to your Tijori. Say, I have some more paper inside. I, I always wanted to give you. Today I will give you, please. Will you do that? That is also paper. This is also paper. No, that is special paper. That is inside lock. Right? Are you going on a train? Generally, before sitting on the seat, seat is little dirty. Take out your 500 rupee note. Clean it. No. Look for other, other paper. Right? You want to eat some batata or something. He doesn't have a paper. Okay, you take out your batata vada. It's me, Dejana. Pants of note. I just can note my chutney to them. Paper, paper, everything is paper. Stone, stone, everything is stone. This is marble, that is marble, this is stone, that is stone. There is a difference. That paper is authorized. Why is it special? Because Gandhiji's photo is there? No. Most important thing is it is authorized by the government. Similarly, the ZT form of Krishna is authorized. And therefore, we are recommended to worship it in the temple. Other forms of worship, we do not know how bona fide they are. 
the form has to be bona fide the method has to be bona fide in both these cases if it is not bona fide then it's not to be considered yes any other question yes please pass on the mic hari krishna prabhu ji hmm. my question is uh, every everybody in, a, in this uh, universe takes birth and dies how could we escape this uh, cycle how to escape this cycle great question to escape the cycle you start preparing just like uh, you one more question mm-hmm. uh, that uh, how can do, do you believe in the life after death and do you uh, really believe that the, again a man who is dying today he is dying and again after some time he will take birth again and again in some other form he will be taking a birth yes we believe and you will also believe now definitely we of course already believe but if you hear what we have to say you will also believe now as far as your first question is concerned i can only give you in short the principle if you want to get out of this cycle of birth and death you have to take to a process right to do anything you need a process and the process is the process of bhakti yoga it begins with chanting so you know this hare krishna maha mantra you chant this hare krishna maha mantra on beads every day you need guidance so you come in the association of devotees get ad- get admission in a university have one of five teachers have one of five books and then you will get proper guidance then you will be able to advance if you think of krishna at the time of death you go to krishna without fail so that is the system now you are doing your regular duties do it as an offering to krishna you are a student so you study with understanding that the fruits i will offer to krishna so devotee whatever it does it becomes krishnaized so learn that technique in guidance most important thing is take guidance without guidance you can't do anything so apparently devotee non devotee may be seen doing the same kinds of things externally right but they are not doing the same thing you may be studying as devotee student is studying non devotee student is studying devotee is working non devotee is working they are not the same just like a prisoner in the jail he is brought to the court in a big government vehicle in a blue vehicle with so many police escorts carrying guns judge also comes to the court in government vehicle with a police escort if the prisoner starts thinking he is also coming in government vehicle i am also coming in government vehicle he is having police escort i am also having police escort i am having more police escort i am having 12 policemen so both judge and me same no both are different because one is breaking the law other is following the law therefore you become a follower of the laws of krishna and as far as reincarnation you already have gone through reincarnation in this life reincarnate means changing bodies so you have changed bodies till now you were a small boy you were born small right i hope so yes so you were born small now you are big when to grow old incarnate means accepting body so your body is have changed but something has not changed the soul is it not so if you are going to reincarnation in this life why not go through reincarnation after this life that's the whole idea at the time of death you take another body understand that is called the science of reincarnation so the whole idea is we have to stop this process of taking bodies and go to the spiritual world yes next question we just have few minutes many questions many hands are being raised but we have very less time uh um, correct yes correct sir just you all told me even other god are following krishna only hmm means ganesha and shiva okay but as per hindu mythology krishna comes after them na 
Now, first of all, according to Hindu mythology, it may be like that. But we are not following mythology. We are following facts. Krishna is the origin of all. Anadir Adir Govinda Sarva Karana Karana is the origin of everyone. Krishna is the cause of all causes. All these other demigods, they are originating from Krishna. So do not go by that sequence. He is coming into display in Kali Yuga, 5000 years back in front of us now. But he has existed long time before. Understand? So if somebody comes into someone's life at a certain stage, you go to college and the teacher enters the class, doesn't mean teacher has come now. He has just dropped and is born there now. No, he is existing. He has entered into the scene at a certain stage. It's like that. Yes. What's the next question? Is it right Krishna will be more happy if you worship his devotees? Yes. You worship his devotees and you also try to become devotee. So, first you start chanting Hare Krishna and also you worship other devotees. Worshipping other devotees means that you follow their instruction. So, that is the most important thing. All the demigods are his devotees. Then why are we not worshipping them? Ah, that's a good question. Demigods are their servants. If you worship them in that mood, that they are devotees and worshipping devotees, then it's all right. But most people don't worship them as devotees. Most people worship them as gods in all in all. And when you worship the devotees, it means that you want to serve them. But most people want something from them. Let's not worship that business. So we don't recommend business, but we recommend service. Yes. We have to stop question answers here. Yes, last question. Hare Krishna Prabhu ji. Hmm. Yes. Even though we know even though we know that the materialistic pressure has a hazardous characteristic, uh, then then also we require it. Why? Then also? We require it. We require it? Why? We, are, uh-huh. not, we feel that we require it. Although we hear that it's hazardous. Still, we it appears to us that we can't do without it. That's what I mentioned that it's addicting in nature. And because we have no association so far, understand? So you must come in proper association of devotees. Unless you get knowledge, how will you advance? Till now the whole world is telling us, you need it, you need it, you need it. You need to smoke, you need to drink, you need to have sex, you need to have all these pleasures, otherwise life is a failure. So if you are hearing constantly this bombardment, then what else is expected? So now you see, a group of 350, 400 students, young boys, they have all assembled here, gathered here, trying to absorb spiritual knowledge. This is a powerful association. Every Sunday we have program, 12.30 in the afternoon in the temple. Attend these lectures. Dance in the kirtan. Chant Hare Krishna every day. Do not feel ashamed. In India the biggest problem is, young people many times feel ashamed to do anything spiritual. They will smoke a cigarette with practically no shame. <sighs> Throw out various circles in various directions. Practice also in front of mirror. <sighs> but when it comes to chanting, doing anything spiritual, bowing down in front of God, they feel ashamed. There is some faith, but nobody has proper guidance. I have seen so many people, they are walking on the road, they come in front of some temple or something and they just little bit they look here and there and and they'll just do like this and give flying kiss so if you actually want take proper guidance get systematic training why are you so ashamed of doing anything spiritual you're not doing anything bad you're not doing something antisocial you're getting trained to be perfect, wonderful, realized devotees who can do wonderful service in society. People ask, what is the use of conducting these programs? Go out in the streets and distribute food to the poor. Go out and do some social service. Why are you wasting your time conducting programs, getting so many young enthusiastic people 
who can possibly do so much of service but they are sitting and hearing for two hours? If you go to a medical college, you will see in a medical college classroom, 150, you know, students sitting and hearing lectures for four and a half years. So you enter into the classroom and say, come on professor, stop it. Have you seen the OPD? How many patients are standing? The hospital is bursting as it seems. Release all these 150 students. They may be in first year, no problem, but we need to do service. Patients are dying. We need to help them die fast. Send them. These students have not been trained. How can they be released? Four and a half years they need to get to train themselves. That means they will sit and hear, gain knowledge. Unless you sit and hear, what service you can do? Therefore, come in the association, sit and hear. And then you practice in your own lives. And then you try to achieve these goals as they have described. And remember, perish all these various kinds of material miseries associated with so-called material pleasure. Give up the material pleasure hunt. Seek the real spiritual pleasures which are there, lying there within the core of the heart by chanting Hare Krishna! Hare Krishna! 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 Hare Hare! Hare Ram! Hare Ram! Ram Ram! Hare Hare! I thank you all very much. Hare Krishna! Shri Rapa Hupadaki, Sai Gaur Premanande.